What's up everybody, my name is Rohawk and welcome to the video where we'll be taking a deep dive into the random forest machine learning algorithm. In just under 10 minutes, you can expect to have a solid understanding of the random forest classifier as well as how to implement it entirely from scratch in Python. Well, without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the programming section of this video where we'll be implementing the random forest classifier algorithm entirely from scratch in Python. As always, if you want to follow along with the tutorial, the link to the Kaggle dataset we'll be exploring can be found down in the description below. So feel free to check that one out. With that aside, let's dive in. Now, the first thing we need to do is import some standard data science libraries, pandas for data frame manipulation, as well as Seaborn and Matplotlib for visualization purposes. Awesome. We can now load in our data frame with the read CSV function of pandas, which takes in the path of a dataset as a parameter. So here, if we specify the file name of our iris data in our call to the read CSV method, we have now successfully loaded in our dataset. So if we print out the first five rows of our data, we get the following output where the independent variables of sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width are collectively used to predict the outcome of the species dependent variable. Here, since we don't really need this ID column, we can simply drop it like so, where we specify the column name, the axis, which is represented as one for a column, and set in place equal to true, which ensures that our data frame is changed permanently. So if we view our modified data frame, we can see that the ID column is no longer present. Awesome. The next portion of data preprocessing that we have to complete revolves around label encoding the species column. Since the column values in species are categorical and string based, we need to assign each unique value a numeric label in order for our data to be read by the random forest classifier. To start off, we first import the label encoder class from scikit-learn's preprocessing module. Next, we can create a new label encoder object and store it in a variable called encoder. Great. Now we can call the fit transform method on our species column and store the label encoded result back into our species column. So here, if we print out our data frame, notice that our species column is numeric instead of categorical, which means that we've successfully label encoded our data. Additionally, if we print out all of the unique values in our species column, Instead of seeing string names, we are met with numeric labels. 0 represents Setosa, 1 represents Versicolor, and 2 represents Virginica. With our data pre-processed and ready to go, we can now begin building our random forest classifier. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. To start off, let's import the train test split function from scikit-learn's model selection class. Next, we can partition our data into x and y subsets where the x data contains all of our independent variables and the y data contains our dependent variable of iris species. Next, we can create x and y train test sets in a call to train test split with our x data, y data, and a test size of 0.2 passed in as parameters. In regards to our test size parameter, when we set it to 0.2, we essentially reserve 80% of our data for training purposes and 20% of our data for testing purposes. Now that our data has been successfully split into training and testing sets, we can construct and train a random forest classifier on our X and Y training data. So the first thing we do is simply import the random forest classifier from scikit-learn's ensemble package. Awesome! Now we can assign a new variable called model to a new random forest classifier object with the number of estimators hyperparameter set to 20. This means that we will use 20 decision trees to build our random forest. Finally, we'll fit our model to the X and Y train sets that we generated previously. Now, to gauge the accuracy measure of our random forest classifier, I made a call to the score method on our model object with our X and Y test sets passed in as parameters. So, if we run our method, we can see that our model performed overwhelmingly well, yielding a final accuracy measure of roughly 93%. While this is definitely a great score, let's dig in deeper and look for any ways in which we can make improvements. A common method of doing this is examining the feature importance measures for each independent variable in our classifier. By understanding what features contribute least to the algorithm's predictions, we can eliminate them and promote the variables that are more predictive. To get a better understanding of this, 
let's retrieve the feature importances of all of the independent variables involved in our model. So we do this by creating a new pandas series with our model's feature importances making up the row values and our independent variables making up the row indices. Next, for convenience purposes, we can store all of our results in descending order so that we can immediately see which variables contribute the most and which variables contribute the least. So here, if we print out our series, we get the following result. And here you can see that the independent variables and their associated feature importances are displayed on each row. Additionally, all of our feature importance values are sorted in descending order. To better visualize the deviation in feature importance between all of these variables, let's plot a bar plot of our data. Let's start by calling Seaborn's bar plot function, with our x consisting of the importance measure and our y consisting of the individual independent variables. So here, as you guys can see, I specify the individual feature importance values for our x data, and for our y data, I specify the index of our panda series, which are essentially all of the independent variables that correspond to those feature importances. After adding a title and a few axes labels for increased readability, we're ready to visualize our plot. So here, if we click run, we yield the following bar plot. And as you guys can see, while petal width and length hold a significant amount of weight on our classifier's predictions, the sepal length and width attributes are comparatively insignificant. To reflect these importances, let's redefine our x data, this time choosing to also drop the sepal length and width columns in addition to our species column. Our y data, however, will remain the same. So, after recreating and training our random forest classifier, we yield a much higher accuracy measure. I really like this exercise because it shows how informed selection of features can greatly increase a model's capacity to perform well on unseen testing data. Awesome! With our newly refined model intact, let's visualize one of the random forest decision trees for fun. First, of course, the plot tree function will need to be imported from the tree module of scikit-learn. Next, let's set the size of our figure to 60 by 30, which ensures that we'll be able to properly visualize all of the decision and leaf nodes in our diagram. Now, it's time to call the plot tree function. We'll first apply a random estimator from our random forest. I chose the fifth decision tree at random. Next, we'll set the filled parameter to true, which colors each node according to its class label. Additionally, we'll set the feature name's hyperparameter to the names of our independent variables that we used to train our random forest classifier. So here, as you guys can see, I specified the names of our petal length and petal width columns as input to this parameter. Likewise, we'll assign the class name's parameter to the names of each unique class value in our dependent variable. Now, the last three parameters aren't as significant since they are simply responsible for rounding all of the probabilities, removing any percentages, and setting the number of significant figures to two. After running our code, we can see what one of the decision trees from our random forest looks like. Here, we can clearly see all of the decision rules, class values, and leaf nodes in an orderly fashion. This is machine learning in action. And there we have it. Within a matter of just minutes, we have successfully built, trained, and improved a random forest classifier entirely from scratch. This is the power of machine learning, a tool that enables us to solve complex real world problems in just a couple short lines of Python code. As always, if you have any doubts or concerns regarding the script, a GitHub link to the Jupyter Notebook can be found in the description below. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.